over half the population of the United States was either born after or is too young to have any personal recollection of World War II. So such remembrances as uh, Guadalcanal, gas rationing coupons, Series E war bonds, or Kilroy was here, mean little to most Americans today. But those who do recall the times know that everything in our society was affected by the war, including football. In our nation's capital, the Washington Redskins adapted to wartime conditions and in their own way helped to contribute to building the nation's morale. It was a typically quiet Sunday in Washington, D.C. on December 7, 1941. Most people turned their attention to the game between the Redskins and Eagles, but thousands of miles away in Hawaii, a nation was about to be plunged into war. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately packed by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. We were playing the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in Washington, D.C. on December 7th, 1941. And that's when the uh, Japanese attacked Pearl, Pearl Harbor. And uh, it was during the game that this attack happened. When we got out in the second half, they kept announcing over the loudspeaker, J. Edgar Hoover, report to your office immediately. Jesse Jones, Secretary of Commerce, report to your office immediately. And they were calling General So-and-so, report to your office immediately. Uh, it was quite a, a non thing to hear all these people that were being paged. They paged hundreds of people out of the stands at the Redskin game that day. As the country mobilized its forces to battle, Washington became the center of the nation's war effort. On the rare occasions when the armed forces could take a breather, their favorite diversion was the Redskins, a good team with colorful pageantry, all orchestrated by club owner George Preston Marshall. George Marshall was the showman of the National Football League. He was the first one that had a good band, and he had the Redskin Band. And he had them all painted up and, were, and bought them all Indian costumes, and they paraded around at halftime, and the fans liked it very much. Marshall not only used the band to lift the spirits of the military, but also to wage war on opposing teams. George Preston Marshall decided to follow George Hallis's uh, a trick, and he put the Washington Redskins band behind our bench at Griffin, Griffin Stadium, I believe it was called, Washington, D.C. So the next year we went in, I took a wire cutter, and I just cut the amplifier wire. And that was the end of that. Marshall's colorful, often bizarre halftime shows were a D.C. favorite, particularly during the Yuletide season. You take our last home game before Christmas, you know, in December, Right. The first time he had a helicopter flying over and had Santa Claus bail out and the wind picked the Santa Claus up and like they killed him. Put it on top of the buildings back here and the wind blew it. But how smart he was. He had a substitute on and there he comes out, see? And Marshall, he put on the show. Marshall's pageants weren't the only attraction. His Redskins were consistent winners all during the war years with three division titles and a world championship. And in 1945, when the war ended and the boys came home, Washington vied for the league crown against the Cleveland Rams. Unfortunately, sub-zero weather doomed all the members of the Redskin entourage. The band, their horns froze up, and they couldn't, they couldn't play the damn thing. I guess that moisture and spit or whatever they get in those horns, it froze up on them that, that game. That was a terrible game. I'm sure everybody played in that game but didn't enjoy it too much. And the Redskins only made 32 yards. That was their total net yards for the day was 32 yards. And they were giving out the statistics up there. Washington Redskins, 32 yards net. George Marshall jumped up and he took his hat and he slid it down on the table. He says, gee, dear Christ, I could fall down often enough in the afternoon to make more yards than that. <laughs> Although the Washington War years ended on a chilling note, the Redskins and owner George Marshall could rightfully feel a warm glow of contribution to the nation's morale during World War II.